the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, today is Good Friday. And today, we are going to reflect on why the cross. As you know, Good Friday commemorates the suffering and crucifixion of Jesus that took place about 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. At the first instance, Good Friday seems like the ultimate misnomer. If Jesus was whipped, beaten, mocked, and crucified on a cross in a violent way, then why is today called Good Friday? Good Friday is good because it leads us to Easter Sunday, which is a joyful celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree. He himself became a curse because he was hung on a tree. But through that, he redeemed us. Hence, the Black Friday brings about something really good and it becomes the Good Friday. So Jesus is showing us an example today that we could also imitate and bring to reality in our own lives. When faced with cross, our usual question is, why me? I want to give you the example of Arthur Ashe, the legendary Wimbledon player. He was almost dying of AIDS, which he got through the infected blood received during a heart surgery in 1983. From all over the world, the people, his fans, were sending him messages. And one of them asked him, why does God have to select you for such a bad disease? To this, Arthur Asher replied, The world over 50 million children start playing tennis. 5 million actually learn to play tennis, of which half a million learn professional tennis. 50,000 come to the circuit. 5,000 reach the Grand Slam. 50 reach Wimbledon four to the semi-final and two to the finals. When I was holding the World Cup, I never asked God, why me, Lord? And today, in pain, I should not be asking the Lord, why me? I think it's a beautiful answer. And it should be you know, a model, model for us 
people who ask in times of crisis and cross why me lord suffering is part of life you know i met a man in canada who said when i got married i got three rings i became very curious i said how did this man manage to get three rings so i asked him then he said yes at the engagement i got the engagement ring at the wedding i got the wedding ring then i said how about the third ring he said i got suffering when i got married so whether we are in married life whether we are singles or whether we are consecrated i think all of us we have sufferings in our life and sufferings come from different sources you know when sufferings come we tend to put the blame of the suffering on somebody or the other so either we say it is a punishment on account of our sins or it is a punishment on account of the sins of our ancestors or we say it is a curse or an evil eye or a spell or a black magic or it is all coming from the satan or we tend to say it is coming from an individual or a group of people or our own family members our mother in law our father in law our life partner our boss in the office so all these people seem to be responsible for our sufferings but i would like to ask this question why the cross the cross is a mystery and mystery is something connected to god luke chapter 9 verse 23 if any want to become my followers let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me that is what jesus told the followers his disciples if any one want to follow me let them deny themselves take up their cross daily and follow me that is what he has told us so we need to carry the cross we cannot ask why the cross matthew chapter 10 verse 38 whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me that is what jesus said then the question comes why the cross is our god a sadistic god that he derives pleasure out of our sufferings is it because he does not love us let me tell you you can write in golden letters everyone who passes through suffering gracefully receives blessings i would say the cross is on account of two reasons one is for my own salvation hebrew chapter 12 verse 6 says for the lord disciplines those whom he loves and chastises every child whom he accepts so he disciplines if he loves so if we have the cross in our life that means he loves us deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 5 says know then in your heart that as a parent disciples a child so the lord your god disciplines you it's because the lord loves us that he disciplines us whether crosses make us better or bitter depends on our own situation our own response to the situation i like to give you an example you know there was a man who found a cocoon of a butterfly 
he was watching it and one day he found there was a small opening to that cocoon. Then he sat and watched the butterfly for several hours as it struggled to force its body through that little hole. It seemed that it was not making any progress. And it could not do anything further. So the man decided to help the butterfly. He took a pair of scissors. He snipped off the remaining bit of the cocoon. He just cut it open. The butterfly then emerged easily. But there was something unique over there. The butterfly had a swollen body and a small shriveled wing. The man continued to watch the butterfly and he expected that at any moment the wings would enlarge and expand to be able to support the body which would contract in time. But neither happened. The wings remained small and the body remained enlarged. In fact, the butterfly spent the rest of its life crawling around with a swollen body and shriveled wings. It was never able to fly. Why? Because it was God's plan that this butterfly should pass through that small hole of the cocoon where its body would get skewed and its wings would expand. That was the process that it had to go through. When it did not go through that process, the whole plan of God was aborted. So let us realize that whatever happens in our life, it is all with the knowledge and consent of God. God has a plan for us. God wants us to fly. We need to get the wings. So even tragedies, failures, inconveniences and sufferings are most of the time part of God's plan. Because he loves us. In Acts chapter 14, 22, Paul and Barnabas told the new disciples in Lystra, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Suffering humbles us, softens our rough edges. It is God's chisel to shape the rough human rock that are into the magnificent statue that he has created us to be. So these crosses do shape us, make us better, prune us. That is why Saint Augustine of Hippo said, trials and tribulations offer us a chance to make reparation for our past faults and sins. On such occasions, the Lord comes to us like a physician to heal the wounds left by our sins. Tribulation is the divine medicine. Hallelujah. Pope Francis said, sometimes in our lives, tears are the lenses through which we need to see Jesus. So, some of these crosses are there to help us to achieve our own salvation, to help us to grow, to help us to become holy, to help us to become more perfect. Secondly, these crosses are for the kingdom of God, for the salvation of souls. 1 Peter 2.19 Whenever anyone bears the pain of unjust suffering because of consciousness of God, 
this is a grace. Jesus told St. Faustina, My daughter, I want to instruct you on how you are to rescue souls through sacrifice and prayer. You will save more souls through prayer and suffering than will a missionary through his teachings and sermons alone. So through our crosses, we can rescue souls and it becomes even more powerful than the teachings and sermons of missionaries. Look at St. Stephen. You know, St. Stephen was one of the seven deacons appointed by the apostles in Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. He was filled with grace and power and was working wonders and signs among the people. That is what the Acts of the Apostles chapter 6 tells us. Within a year of his appointment, we witnessed the martyrdom of Stephen. As Stephen was being thrown down from the hill, they were going to crush him with the two heavy stones. Stephen is seeing the heavens open already. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. This is what is recorded in Acts chapter 7 verse 58. Those who were persecuting Stephen were laying down their cloaks at the feet of the young man's soul. Acts chapter 7, 60 says, Then he, Stephen, fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And he is praying for whom? For these persecutors. Dear friends, it is amazing to see the fruits of this. The result is, Acts chapter 9, we see the conversion of Saul to Paul. See the suffering that Stephen endured when he offered this up for the salvation of souls, how Saul gets converted into Paul. This is called redemptive suffering. Suffering, when it is accepted and offered up in union with the passion of Jesus, it can remit the just punishment for our own sins and for the sins of others. Even the Catechism of the Catholic Church clearly teaches us in 1505, by his passion and death on the cross, Christ has given a new meaning to suffering. It can henceforth configure us to him and unite us with his redemptive passion. Dear friends, that's why St. Paul could say confidently in Colossians chapter 1 verse 24, I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh, I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church. Now, was there something lacking in the sufferings of Jesus? We know that Christ is the head of the body. As far as the head is concerned, it is complete. As far as the body is concerned, the suffering is yet to be completed. So the redemptive suffering is any trial or tribulation or cross, physical or mental, when we offer up and unite with Jesus, it becomes redemptive. We know the life of St. Therese of Little Flower. She underwent many sufferings. She was very young, suffering from tuberculosis and being harassed by her own mother general. Mother Gonzaga. And in spite of this, she offered up everything to Jesus. And she became a missionary. Her sufferings, crosses became redemptive. That is why St. Catherine of Siena 
could put it like this. My soul is jubilantly happy in this grief. Because among the thorns, I smell the fragrance of a rose about to be opened. Dear friends, let us close our eyes on this Good Friday. As we reflect on the cross, as we reflect on our own crosses, can we have the same mind of St. Catherine of Siena who said, My soul is jubilantly happy in this grief because among the thorns I smell the fragrance of a rose about to be opened in our own lives and in the lives of others. Let us rejoice with St. Paul as we offer up our sufferings, as we offer up our crosses for our own salvation and the salvation of souls. Amen.